This is Marcel Vogel speaking. I'm going to talk to you now on how to tune the crystal, charge it, clear it, and prepare oneself for the basic operations that are used in the therapeutic practices that we use with these crystals. The crystal I have in my hand now is a four-sided double terminated crystal designed for healing purposes. This is the first crystal I designed and we've gone on now to the six, the seven, and the eight sided crystal. The increase in number of sides here increase the volume of energy that a crystal will hold. It is like having a 4 volt, 6 volt, and 8 volt battery. The same function takes place in the crystal except that there is an increase in charge and power. There are two ends to the crystal. One end, the lower end here, has a pyramid type angle. This other end is designed to release the charge that is coming from the tip of the crystal. Input here and output or release here. It is truly diode in nature in the sense that this then would be looked on as positive this side as negative. If one focuses with the crystal in this way onto diamagnetic material like graphite, this will repel, this other side will attract. Now the first step that one goes through is to clear the crystal from previous vibrations or just in storage the vibrations are accreted onto the crystal. That is done by holding in one's hand this way between the thumb and the index finger. Between each two tips, one takes then the other two fingers, places them on two of the faces, draw one's breath in, and let the breath out through the nostrils, and goes on to the other pair of faces and releases. This is true now for the four-sided crystal. If one has then a higher number of faces, as we have here on the six-sided crystal, one does it for all three pairs. The crystal is clear. One can measure this clarity with instrumentation that we have here in the laboratory and we get now only the fundamental vibration of the crystal which is 454. The next phase is to take the crystal in one's hand and roll it. It's like a stator in a magnet motor and when one rotates the stator one induces a charge in the crystal. One should rotate the crystal with the operating tip facing up and the smaller angle facing downward and one just rotates and the rotation is clockwise to the right. How many turns? Until you feel the crystal becoming sticky in your hand, meaning that as you rub it with your fingers, it takes on a increase in friction or stickiness. One then stops when one feels that, draw one's breath in, with the crystal held in this position, 
and releases the breath through the nostrils. When that is done, to those who are sensitive, one will feel a pulsation between this finger and this finger. It feels like the beat of a heart. This does not happen to everyone, but all of you can feel the following. Is after you have charged the crystal, you take your index finger, you place it on the crystal, draw your breath in, and release your breath, and you find that you've stuck your finger to the crystal. Draw your breath in as you look at it, and the finger becomes free and starts to move freely. Let your breath out as you look at the crystal, and it sticks. Draw the breath in, because here now with focusing one's mind, one draws the charge out with breath and releases the charge with the outgoing breath. When one detaches from one's intention and focus, that does not happen. The crystal operates of its own, oscillates, and one then can work with the charge through one's finger. I repeat this carefully. When one focuses one's attention onto the crystal, one can draw then with intention, with the indwelling breath, the charge out from the crystal, and the outgoing breath, you apply the charge. We will come to this again and again throughout the healing procedure. It is in breathing with intention that you build the charge and create the patterns that are necessary to release, balance, and heal the body of an individual. This finger here can be looked on now as a shutter control. Movement of this finger back and forth will cause this field to broaden or narrow. As one moves the finger down, the field gets lower, bring it back, it becomes broader. One can use a finger, this one also, as a sensor. We will come to this as one locks into the body of a person, and one waits then in holding, one will feel a vibration here and move the finger when it locks, one knows that a charge is flowing freely through the body into the hand and closing a circuit again. So it has a dual function, one controlling the volume of charge, second a sensor for the charge that is flowing or not flowing. These two fingers act as governors of the energy that one wishes to release or draw from the person. As one draws one breath in, one squeezes onto the crystal, one feels one's body perspire, <coughs> and when one releases the outgoing breath, there's a jerking action. These fingers convulse and create then in the crystal an additional charge. This crystal, quartz, silicon dioxide, has a quality of piezoelectricity. This means that when you squeeze the crystal, the pressure is converted into an EMF or electrical charge. If you apply an electrical charge between these two plates like this, these two parallel surfaces, a vibration or sound is produced. 
So it converts pressure into electricity or EMF, or you can apply an EMF and it is converted into a vibration or sound. We're dealing with both of these modalities when one works with the crystal. This covers now the clearing and charging phase of the crystal and I will repeat this now before closing the first part. To clear a crystal, one holds it in one's hand this way and here, breathes through the nostril a second time. What is going on in one's mind is the thought or intention of clearing. It is your intention that produces the result. Phase two, you charge the crystal by first rolling until you feel a slight stickiness. Then you draw your breath in, create an image of the crystal in one's mind, and release the breath with the eyes closed. That completes phase one.